Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalays at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're 8333, and this next match is going to be between Dimefront and Snugglebase on Into Battle, and probably will be longer than our previous one. So, oh, Dimefront going for Hovercraft, as is Snugglebase, because Hovercraft is now the thing to do on flat maps, because Lamadeus did it, and honestly, it hasn't been changed much recently. People just seem to forget that Hovercraft existed. I'm serious. There, I can't think of any particular changes to Hovercraft offhand that have happened in the last few months. It's just that Golda used to play Hovercraft, but Golda hasn't played in about a year or so, and then when they stopped playing, not a lot of people played Hovercraft, because on flat maps, the, off, the common choice was light vehicles. Because, honestly, Hovercraft is not an easy factory to play. They're powerful, but daggers are a bit tricky, especially when you're trying to get their splash damage to work. It's almost more just a property you have to bear in mind rather than something you micro around. And especially the fact that they have such low fire rate, it's, compared to most raiders, they are just remarkably hit and run. That's difficult to deal with. When you have enough of them, it's great, but because of their fire pattern as well, they also tend to be the type of unit that, well, it just, it shoots and then dies, or just gets one shot off. But if you have four or five of them, you can start one-shotting things, or seven of them to one shot the... I think metal extractors are seven of them. So, or, sorry, metal extractors are five of them. So yeah, like you have a certain number of them and you can start one-shotting things, which is remarkably useful because of their low fire rate. So knowing how many you should have and how to position yourself around them and then how to transition out of them into scalpel halberd or possibly into mace, usually scalpel halberd though. Like when to do that and then how to control those, especially halberds. Like hovercraft is a tricky factory to play, but it's powerful and played well has been shown here. It just, it's just a matter of popularity. It just hasn't been played much recently, but only because people haven't been playing it. So now that people have realized, oh yeah, right, Hovercraft's a thing again, we're just seeing them everywhere. Anyway, at this point, Snugglebase coming in on quite a strong setup here, been able to wreck most of Dimefriend's forces, but no, Dimefriend getting a nice angle off their Hovercrafts, putting Snugglebase into a rather pressured position. Oh, Dimefriend's hovers could get close, but the problem, of course, is that daggers are the same speed as other daggers. All daggers move at the same speed, because that's how that's how unit types work in RTS games, is that everything of the same type is exactly the same in all of its properties, so there's no way for the daggers to catch up to each other, unless they move weirdly. But at this point, honestly, it's Dimefriend's game, to, or at least Dimefriend's base to lose, since Snuggle Base is obviously coming out from a distance, and as mentioned in pre last week's cast, Retreat Micro is super important. So if Dimefriend's moving their daggers out of the way, then Snugglebase has farther to go, and Dimefront can more easily hit Snugglebase, and Snugglebase can't hit Dimefront. So when Dimefront's on defense, that all works out nicely. At any rate, Dimefront's been able to stabilize and actually get a slight economic advantage. Snugglebase, a bit more focused on defense, properly paranoid, mind you. This, this Stardust over here in the Northeast, that did its job. Not necessarily for cost, but it has done its job to at least stop Dimefriend from getting some free hits in. But unfortunately, Dimefriend's positioning on them... Oh, that is bad. I was about to say, the positioning on the daggers is going to get a couple of them killed for free, and that's exactly what happened. Dimefriend trying to get them into a nice line again in order to surround Snugglebase. If they manage to do that, then there could be a bit of equalization, but Snugglebase's daggers are just taking damage. They aren't dying. Finally, they're dying. But... Even then, Dimefriend still has all this wreckage. If they can go and actually reclaim that. Dimefriend's actually at a slight advantage now. The positioning isn't great because they are approaching Snugglebase. But as long as they are able to push Snugglebase out of there, get a quill up there. And there's already a quill. That quill is being sent forward, but I think that's just factory... Yeah, that's factory rally point. That quill needs to start reclaiming. And Dimefriend's going to lose this dagger for free. Snugglebase... Making a very smart choice about where to position their daggers, and it looks like that was entirely a guess. Or almost entirely a guess. Or at the very least, they might have seen that one dagger. That's the thing. Snuggle Base right now is in a strong enough position, they don't have to worry about that so much. But, looks like Snuggle Base's daggers have been chased away, so when this quill is done... Wait, when is that? where's that quill? There's the quill. That's a different quill, isn't it? Hmm. I guess they don't have a quill going up there for reclaim. They need to. That's a major thing. There is 400 metal worth of reclaim right there. Like, that's enough to buy another couple daggers. Actually, that's enough to buy five daggers, which is 
definitely a difference maker, as mentioned before. One-shotting is a major thing, and Snuggle Base getting an advantage on Diamond Frame. Diamond Frame not able to get into a position where they can actually deal some meaningful damage to those daggers. Killed off a couple of them, but lost their entire army in the process. So right now, Diamond Frame at a major disadvantage. No transition into Mace or Scalpel. Either would be good. Probably more so Scalpel. But neither of them are being built. Diamond Frame still hasn't gotten the reclaim that's basically going to keep them in a strong position. Their commander is way out in the open. It's pretty much doomed at this point. There's, Are there 29 daggers here belonging to Snuggle Base? No, there's 15, so it'll be two-shotted. Like, if that commander is too far out in the open, it will get two-shotted. It does have a light particle beam, which is good. That'll help. But man, Snuggle Base could have gotten a commander kill right there, and Dying Friend able to chase off Snuggle Base's daggers once again. At least some of them. Four of them coming around the back with very few defenses to deal with them. Defender's going to help out a bit, but it's not enough. There will be one metal extractor lost, and oh, maybe not quite. Okay, never mind. What am I saying? That's exactly what happened. One metal extractor down, and the southeast completely wrecked. Snuggle Base just raiding beautifully here as they take the entire north side of the map, too. They've taken most of their their half of the map. Dime Friend's taken a fair bit. They're not in a terrible position. Economically speaking, they could be better. Most of that, however, can be dealt with with Reclaim. Like I said, 500 metal worth of reclaim in a pretty small area. They can deal with that. Or just get another... Yeah, there's the quill. Get another quill. Reclaim, even here, is 200 metal. Now, it looks like they're going for static metal instead. I kind of understand that, but at the same time, there is so much reclaim, and Dime Fern suddenly behind, that would be huge to get that reclaim going. And I know I'm harping on that. I know I'm harping. It's just that important. Reclaim is huge. Thankfully, though, for Dime Friend, their commander is still able to operate effectively as a defensive structure at the front, so that should slow down some of Snuggle Base's approaches. Actually, Snuggle Base is also going pure dagger. This is just dagger on dagger. This is entirely dagger action. We're in a knife fight in a sandy pit. That is this game here. I don't know if you people enjoy knife fights in sandy pits. I mean, I really... I gotta say, it's it's really person to person. It's a matter of taste. But if you like them, you're in the right spot. That being said, Dime Friend coming in one at a time, that's in a line against daggers is the wrong way to approach them. I mean, it's kind of a bit of a pathfinding fail, but still, it does work out for Snuggle Base regardless. Dime Friend forced to retreat again, but Dime Friend, of course, sorry, Snuggle Base forced to retreat again. Snuggle Base does regroup, however, and with the slight economic advantage they've had, it's still working out in their favor. This is what I mean. Dime Frame needs to reclaim. The biggest advantage they have right now is that all of the fights that have happened so far, with the exception of a couple raids, a couple tiny raids into Snuggle Base's territory, have been in Dime Frame's territory. And Dime Frame has, like, in their territory that's relatively easy to get, almost 2,000 metal worth- that's 2,000 metal worth of reclaim? Seriously, and haven't gone for that yet? What? How has Dime Frame not gone for that yet? That is massive. Like, the sheer amount of metal right there, if they get it, like, they could get enough constructors to be on par with Snuggle Base for, like, at least two minutes. Two or three minutes. With no problems. And possibly longer, but no, unfortunately, Dime Frame throwing in the towel, they needed that money. That was huge. If they had managed to reclaim that money, they had gone for it and just gone all the reclaim. That would have been enough to stabilize, because the thing is, Snuggle Base... If you look at their unit value, they were actually, or units killed rather, okay, they were slightly advantageous, but Dime Frame never really managed to get enough units built after about the point where their static economy got worse than Snuggle Base. As soon as Snuggle Base started harassing, like, look at this point here, and look at the point of the units built. It's almost exactly the same point in time. So, basically, Dime Frame and Snuggle Base, the entire thing was based on how much, I mean, units killed, units lost is entirely based on that, but units built is more important because daggers scale in numbers, but it's difficult with daggers to destroy a large force of daggers with another force of daggers. It's possible with really good micro, but for the most part, and we saw this game, it was a matter of who had more daggers. Like, whoever had more daggers won. And Snuggle Base was able to continuously get more and more daggers, especially near the end of the game. Dying Friend wasn't. Dying Friend was able to stay alive for a lot of the beginning because they were stronger economically. They had more daggers to work with. But then Snuggle Base managed to get the advantage, and once they got the unit's built advantage, the unit value advantage went to Snuggle Base gradually and then 
here, like, this is about the same point as when the economy went in Snuggle Base's favor, and we see Dying Friend's force just levels off. It never gets any larger than this, value-wise, and Snuggle Base continues to grow in value. So that's a huge deal. And that's what I mean. If Dying Friend had reclaimed, they would have kept their income on par or possibly higher than Snuggle Base's, which would have allowed them to maintain a strong dagger advantage, and then would have allowed them to start actually doing some proper raids after they made Snuggle Base's force respect them somewhat. But that didn't happen because they never, Dying Friend never got enough dagger because they never got enough money because they didn't take the money that they had right there, which would have saved them. I'm really surprised they didn't do that. I would have loved to see that. Oh well, regardless, apparently the next game is one I'm going to absolutely enjoy because I've gotten two requests for it after I put it on just by coincidence. Like, I was already planning on doing this, and then two people, like Floris the 14th and I hate my LO, I'm not sure that if they have a different name, both said, hey, you should do this match, and I just told them I already had planned to do it. It's a match between Anarchid and Diferent on Titan Duel, which apparently really explores a lot of the new meta. I look forward to that. Hopefully you do too. It'll be up in a few minutes.